Welcome back. In our last video, we set up a Parasoft proxy to intercept the calls between our application and our backend system. Now what we want to do is use that interception and capture the traffic from the application to the dependency and use that to create a virtual service. In this video, we will cover the following topics. Recording traffic, create a virtual asset from that traffic, update the data in the repository, and redirect the proxy to the virtual service. To start the recording process, we want to head back to Virtualize and look at the Virtualize perspective. We can find that in the top right-hand corner and click on Parasoft Virtualize. And just like monitoring, we can start the recording from here, or we can right-click and start recording. As soon as we select, you will see the icon changes with a little red light. Additionally, you will see information in your console indicating that you started recording and where your traffic file is going to go. Now that we are recording, we can simply exercise the application. So let's pull that back up. Click on here again. Log back in. Once you're logged back in, you're going to go ahead and go to request loan. Now I'm going to do a couple of different loans here because we want to get a lot of data into the system. So we're going to start with the first one of $1,000. With the $10 down payment. I'm going to click Apply Now. I'm going to go to Request Another Loan. This time we're going to do a million dollars with a $1 down payment and Apply. And you can see we got an error on this one. And then I'm going to go to Request Loan again. And just so we have some extra data, I'm going to do a $2,222 loan with a $22 down payment. Now, usually at this point, I would run a large portion of my UI tests, regression tests, and API tests. Anything I could to capture more traffic. The more traffic I have, the better my virtual service will be. I think this is sufficient for now, so I'm going to head back to Virtualize. I'm going to stop the recording, which I can do by clicking here. Again, I can also do it by clicking here. I will then see if I look at my console that all those requests and responses, uh, which is six messages. So this means that there was three requests and three responses. And the traffic file is called loanprocessor.txt. This is something that Virtualize automatically created. So now I can take that traffic and create my first virtual asset from the traffic. To do that, I'm going to go into my Virtual Asset Explorer. I'm going to right click. I'm going to click Add New Virtual Asset. Now I want to name this uh, the same the same as the backend service that I'm simulating. So we're going to call this loan processor. Then we're going to click next. And we're actually going to do this based off of a traffic file. So I'm going to click choose parameterized messages. And this will store the data into my data repository. So now I'm going to choose the traffic file. So I'm going to go to workspace. I'm going to look for the traffic file that I just got. So we're going to take this one here and click OK. This is where Virtualize is going to do the majority of the heavy lifting. So what I'm going to do is tell it to use the embedded server storage area. Drop that down to embedded server. This is called a repository. I'm going to call this loan processor demo. And I'm going to do a quick validation to make sure that there's not a thing. So validation succeeded. And then click Next. In this case, it realizes that it is XML. And the details for putting the request together will be held in the request body. So that's correct. We're going to click Next. Instead of all six messages, three of them were paired together. And the operation type was Request Loan. So that's here. And it's going to auto-configure my services for it. I'm going to let it do the auto-configure, but I'm going to uncheck this so I can see exactly what it's doing. So here we can see the Request Correlation section, and it's basically saying it's going to look at any time I did a loan and a down payment. It's also going to look at my available funds, but since I didn't modify my available funds, I'm going to go ahead and remove that from the decision-making criteria. We'll talk more about this in a subsequent video. Finally, I'm going to feed the pair bank whistle to my virtual service. So we're going to click on Service Definitions, and you can find the pair, the pair bank whistle at localhost 8080, pair bank, services, loan processor, whistle. Click Next. Having a service definition file 
will always make your virtual services much better because it will have all the schema information that you need. Now I'll go ahead and click finish and we're gonna go through the track of traffic file and it'll create the virtual service for me. After it's created the virtual service, we can see it here, loanprocessor.pva. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. If we click on request loan, we can see the response and we can see that that response is coming from the data sources and the data repository named request loan. So we can quickly take a look at the data source request loan by opening the table. And we see pretty much the same information that we entered when we did our request. If this, then this is the response. All right, let's go ahead and change something about our request. Then we'll exercise our virtual service. Let's look at, say, the $1,000 request. And if we open up the response here, and we can look at the, the loan provider. And I'm simply going to change this to virtualize. Now we need to redirect our incoming request towards our virtual service. To do that, we need to know the endpoint of the virtual service, and we need to redirect the proxy to point to the virtual service. And all of that can be accomplished here in the server view. Let's go ahead and open our virtual assets. And here we see our first virtual asset, which is loan processor. So let's go ahead and double click. And we're gonna take a look at that endpoint. So from the traffic, it read that proxy because that is where we recorded it from. What we should do here is change our path to say virtual because we don't want our proxy and our virtual asset to have the same endpoint. Then what we need to do is feed back into our proxy. So let's just grab this endpoint. Make sure you save it. Once we have this open, we're going to double click here. And this is going to actually open up our proxy. So instead of going to the real service, which is what we've been doing to record the traffic, now we're going to let it go to the virtual service. There's no need to change our target application, and we know that it's going to continue to go to the proxy. So that's here. Now when we say OK and save, we will be directing our application through the proxy to point at the virtual service. Now the final step we need to do is enable our virtual service and we are good to go. So to do that, we go over here to the virtual service for loan processor and we click on enable. So what's happening now is the application is connecting through the proxy to the virtual service. We can test our connection to the application and to do this, we can apply again for $1,000. So we're going to open up Parabank. We're going to apply for a thousand bucks, ten dollars and down. And now when we click submit, we can see that we that this traffic went through the virtual service as opposed to going through the real service. Now that we've shown how to create virtual services from recorded traffic, stay tuned for our next video for creating a virtual service from a service definition.